This tutorial is aimed for beginners to Blender, where we'll be making a simple campfire using pixel art textures. Let's get into it. First off in a new scene, you want to go into add, mesh, and add in a new cylinder. Bottom left corner, you'll find a add cylinder interface. If it isn't open already, just click to open it. And the only thing you need to change is the vertices. So you're going to go into that and change it to something like six. And now we've got a basic log shape. Now I want it to face the front view. So I'm going to click one on my number pad which will put me automatically into front face view. And I'm gonna rotate it R, X on the X axis and type in 90 to rot it, rotate it exactly 90 degrees. And I'll have my basic log shape. Now I'm gonna extend it slightly over by S to scale on the Y axis, just generally around there, doesn't matter too much. Now we have our log shape, but I'm gonna inset the edges to get a bit of a lip around the edge. I'm gonna go into face mode, click our faces, I to insert about there, E to extrude through the inside, and there we go. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Now you're best typing in numbers or mirroring each side to get perfect results, but I'm just gonna quickly just do it like that so we can move on. Now I have my basic log and we're gonna go on to texture painting. So on the top menu here, I'm going to click UV editing, which will give up our UV editing space. I'm going to create a new texture. I'm going to go into new, name it T underscore campfire. You can name this whatever you like, but I'm going to name it that. And change our width and our height to something like 32, which will be a small pixel density for our object. And there we are. Now I'm going to go back into my 3D view. Maybe make this a bit smaller. Go back into my 3D view to select all. So I'm going to scale it down to something about that. So we have room and there. So we have room for our stones. Now with that done, we can go straight on to applying this texture onto our object, which I'm going to click material properties on the bottom right here. New object where it says base color under the surface tab right here. If it's on, if it's closed, just open it up, go into base color, yellow dot image texture and select using our select image, which is T campfire. And we have that all set up, but we cannot see our image. So we're going to go change our viewport shading method onto one on the right, which is viewport shading. And it'll show us our material preview. We should all be black now. Going into back into yours where we set our texture, make sure linear is turned to closest. So we get accurate and sharp where there's no auto scaling going on for your pixel textures. Now we can go straight onto texturing our object. Okay, before painting, I want to actually go and change the viewport shading mode because on this current mode, you won't actually see the proper colors. So I'm going to go back into this solid sphere here, arrow, go into our settings, and I want to change the color to texture. That will give us our texture display and it give us a nice color. Now, there's a lot more properties to choose here. I prefer to work on flat or matte cap so I can see the corners nicely and I can see the solid colors. Now going into texture painting, I'm going to change from object mode into texture paint. And before we start painting, I want to scroll over, just using my mouse wheel, right to the end and select options here. In options, you have an option, a setting name bleed. Two is a bit too many, but I'm just going to set it to one because I prefer some bleed. So the objects can wrap nicely, especially when they're irregular shapes and not perfect circles or perfect, perfect squares. Okay, now we can paint our shape a solid color. But before that, we're going to select our faces, which we want to paint. So I'm going to start off with the outside of the log. So I'm just going to shift alt left click, clicking on the edges and getting all our edges over. Tab to go back into texture paint, select our paint mask. And you'll see the mask, the faces which we have select aren't colored in white, but the faces we haven't select are colored in white, meaning we're not going to paint them when we actually paint. So now from here, I'm just going to go right click to access my painting settings and make a light colored wood. Now you may notice there's some leaking on the sides here, which is an easy fix. If I press tab to go back into edit mode, deselect everything. I want to select these sides again and move them to a different spot. Now I'm going to select my inside shapes, tab again to go back into texture paint mode. And these are going to be a lot lighter. So I'm going to change up the saturation, the brightness, and I'm going to paint these. 
Okay, while still on texture paint mode, a quick way to add quick details is you just right click, take down the radius a bit, take down the strength for lot, something to like 0.05 and change starting off dark, lighter, whatever it may be, adding details to it. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy, but I'm just running circles around it to get a general circle shape. Now I can go into my log pieces, making sure to select the edges and going back into texture paint mode. And doing the same here. I want to pick a much darker color because it's going to be charred wood. Drawing in lines of a grain of a wood. Now I've just done it very quickly, but when you're doing it, add more detail, make it look nicer, take some more time. Okay, now we have our log. I'm going to leave that there for now and I'm going to work on my stones. Same process again, except for I'm going to start off with a cube. I'm going to move this to the side just for now, scale it down. Loop cuts with control R and stretch them out on the X axis and the Y axis to make a general stone shape. Another loop cut scale. And we've got a general, general kind of stone shape. I'm going to go in my top view with seven on the number pad, change the vertices mode and make it a little bit less uniform. Now make sure when you are selecting your vertices, like I just did there, make sure to toggle on toggle x-ray, which will make you sure you are clicking all vertices. So I'm going to turn that off now. And we have our, our rock. Select all, make a small, move it to the corner, and I can start painting that now. Make sure when you go back into texture paint mode, you want to turn off your paint mask so you can just focus on the rock. I'm going to pull my strength up, radius back up again, and start painting my rock. Again, make it lighter, pull down the strength, add some detail. Now you may notice when you're painting that there is some warping, which means we've unwrapped it incorrectly. Now that we have our rock, we can just start duplicating, shift D and start making a general campfire shape. Okay, shift D again, rotating it. Every now and then flipping it completely over, rotating it by 180 degrees to get the other side of a rock. Coming again, rotating. Okay, to get some variation. Now, another way you could do that is to start playing with the scale, making some smaller, making some bigger, or making different variations of the rocks. You might have two different rocks, three different rocks, whatever it may be. But just for the sake of the tutorial, we're just going to have one type of rock and place them just like that. Okay, it may change the scale a little bit, may rotate them slightly. Once we have our general campfire shape, I can select my log and we're going to be duplicating that now. I might maybe make it a little bit smaller so it can fit in between the rocks. Shift duplicate them, move them over. Now this is a spot when I'm going to rotate it on the Y so I can get the different variations of a log so they look differently each time. Or again, you might want to paint some different size logs. Now with this, I'm just going to rotate them and place them generally. That's the way I'm going to leave it. Okay, now with that, the only thing that's left is for the bottom ashes or burnt logs to stay, just so we don't see the underground floor if we're going to use it on or place it on something like grass in our games or whatever it may be. So simply enough, we're going to go back into modeling to layout, add a circle. Every circle needs to be scaled up. So I'm going to go press seven on my numpad, scale it up before I scale. Common mistake, make sure I go into object mode, edit mode, and there I can make it bigger. And just so it touches all the rocks. Press E to extrude it, scale it right in. And I should have a point here. If I press M to merge, merge at center, I get a merging point right in the middle here. I'll scale this down, so add a little bit of elevation. 
Might need to pull some of these rocks a bit closer so they hide the edges of that circle. Now with that done, we can go back into texture paint. I think I'm pretty happy with that. That's all for the tutorial. Just a reminder that I've included the download link to this model and another polished version I've made in the description below. Hope you found it helpful.